We'll start in seated position, grabbing a block, a bolster, or some sort of a cushion, even a blanket, uh, tucked underneath our glutes, just to elevate them, only for the first part, if, in fact, you wish to do so. It's not mandatory, but I find it's nice because it elevates my diaphragm and enables me to breathe a little bit deeper. Uh, allowing our hands to fall open on our thighs wherever they may naturally. And as usual, we'll start today's practice with a few deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Noticing the muscles in our faces soften. And allowing our bodies now to assume the natural rhythm of breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Noticing where the breath enters the body. The rising and falling sensation of the lungs diaphragm, the abdomen. And then noticing in the bottom of each exhale, the pause at the bottom before your next inhalation. Deliberately taking these few breaths in the beginning of our class activates the calming effects of the parasympathetic nervous system on our arousal and nervous systems. The more we focus on our breath being still and quiet, the more we cultivate self-awareness by connecting to our physical sensations, which is an essential tool for recovery and restoration. intention for today's practice, perhaps reflecting on the reason that you felt motivated to come to the mat today and to join our community. Inhale, we'll lift our shoulders up towards the ears, and on the exhale, we'll release the shoulders, pressing them down towards the mat. Repeating this, inhale, lifting and squeezing, shrugging the shoulders up. Exhale, releasing and pressing them down. Moving to the rhythm of our breath. Two more times. And then we come back to neutral, changing the position of our feet. So if one was in front of the other, just change them so the opposite one is out front. Bringing our hands back to our thighs on the inhalation, we're going to lift our right arm off our, the ground. And on the exhale, we'll lower it back down. Switching arms, inhale, lifting the left arm. Exhale, lowering it down, and we'll alternate like this. Slowly starting to open up the chest and the upper back, maybe even adding a little bit of a twist of the spine. As the spine warms up, again activated with the ujjayi breath, that warming breath that we breathe with sound. It plays a purpose in enabling us not only to move more freely, but to calm our system. And 
We'll do two more on each side. time lifting our right arm up and over we're coming back to a spinal twist pressing our left hand against the left knee open twist here gazing over the right shoulder tall upper body perhaps it's only the fingertips touching the floor that is okay breathing deeply feeling the rib cage expand laterally Three more breaths. Now on the next inhale, we draw the arm all the way back up and around. Resetting. Inhale, we lift the left arm and circle it around on the exhale. Coming again up on the left fingertips, we look over the left shoulder, keeping an open twist here. The right hand presses against the right knee. Gentle twist and deep breath. Two more breaths. On the next inhale, we swoop our arm all the way back around and bring it back down in front. Great. Changing the position of our legs into rock pose will come off of our block, but of course it's an option to put it between our legs. If that's more comfortable for a passive rock pose, you are very welcome to do so. Listen to the knees and the thigh muscles here. bringing our right hand up and over the head. I'm just gonna draw the ear towards the shoulder on the right side. And then go ahead and allow the left arm to float on a diagonal away from the body, playing around with the pose and the positioning of the neck, the head and the arm. Exploring any areas of tightness Breathing into them, releasing the blockages on the exhalation. Maintaining a tall upper body. Good. Releasing the right hand and we'll Allow the head to circle around to the left side of the body. Let's circle it again to the right, back to the left. We'll do just a few head circles here. You're welcome to extend the circle to behind, lowering the head towards the back. Keeping both hands extended from the body or resting on your thighs if that's more comfortable. And then the next time that the ear reaches the left shoulder, go ahead and stay there, lifting the left arm, bringing it over to the right side of the head and drawing the head over, elongating the spine, allowing the arm to float over to the right, possibly on a diagonal, exploring this side of the body. Perhaps we hold our tension a little bit differently Noticing any sensations we may have. Good. Releasing the left hand again, allowing it to float, and then we'll circle the head around the other direction. So 
allowing the arms to fall naturally wherever they will. We'll circle around one more time. And once back to center on the inhale, we lift the head, stacking it back on top of our bodies. Curling our toes underneath the shins, we come into toes pose. Lowering our glutes back down to the heels. And we're gonna interlace the hands, press them forward parallel to the floor. On the inhale, we lift the arms over top of our bodies, allowing the back to bend as it will naturally. And on the exhale, we round out, lowering our heads, chins through to the chest. Inhale, we rise up. And exhale, we round back out. Noticing the navel, the activation of the abdomen on the exhale. Drawing the pelvis forward, slowly warming into the stretch of the lower back, and moving to the flow of your breath. Staying up on the toes as long as you can, feeling the sensations, noticing what's happening. We'll do three more. And last time. Deep breath in. And on the exhale, go ahead and allow the arms to float down. Deep breath here. Inhale, we rise back up, stacking the vertebra, and release the toes from underneath us. Give them a little bit of a tap behind. Ah, oh, nice. So lowering down into a seated tree pose, we'll bring our right foot tucked in, and we'll extend the left leg long on the mat. So the left leg is wide, directed to the corner, and the right leg is tucked in at whatever angle works for you today. Lifting the right arm all the way up over the shoulder and we're gonna sink over to the left leg, allowing the left arm to fall where it will. Perhaps we wanna find a block and place it on the inside of our leg at whatever height may work or just allow the arm to fall where it will. Perhaps you even wanna to reach towards the toe or the bottom of the foot whatever comes naturally to you. Purpose is to breathe deeply into the right side body, elongating the spine, creating space between the ribs, noticing the breath, that we're not forcing ourselves into any pose. And we're not creating stress in the body so as not to create stress in the mind. On the exhale, so we're going to lower that arm down towards the right, the left arm, so that our body now is rotated towards the extended leg. Foot is flexed. We're hinging over top of the extended leg again, very gently. This time, you may even feel a little bit more talking in the back of the left hamstring, perhaps even in the right lower back. Feeling everything wrapping around and how connected all of our tissues are. Maintaining a tall upper body and deep breaths. Walking the fingertips to the front. Now we're going to reach our arms forward. 
Again, hinging at the hips, keeping the left foot flexed and lowering ourselves down onto our forearms or again onto a block. Elongating the spine from tailbone through to crown of head. And let's check in with the breath. Check in also as to what's happening in the jaw. Are we holding our tension there? Let's walk ourselves back up. Bring the left leg behind us so that we're in a double four pose, deer pose. Making sure that our left knee is on the mat. We're gonna go ahead and bend ourselves backwards. So leaning backwards, staying high on the hands to start. And as possible, go ahead and lean yourselves back perhaps again on a block, a bolster, or onto your forearms. We're working the quadricep here, as well as the hip flexor, all those muscles and ligaments that connect our hip through to our knee. Be gentle. Again, we're not creating stress here today. And again, we exhale our judgment and competition. There is no expectation other than to listen to the body. Move only with the sensations and letting the breath guide us. Be here for three more breaths. Maybe explore a little bit deeper. And then on the next inhale, we'll press ourselves all the way up, gently coming out of this. Good. Switching our legs completely. So bringing the left leg all the way in front. The right leg scooches out to the right corner, flexing the foot. Once in position, we'll bring our left arm to stack over top of the shoulder and then come into a side bend, allowing the right arm to fall where it will, keeping both sit bones firmly grounded into the mat. We extend the left arm or we wrap it around our back if more comfortable. Elongating the spine, breathing deeply between the rib cage, creating space. Two more breaths, and then we'll round our left arm for, over towards the right, slowly pivoting our torso so that it is hinging over top of the extended leg. Once again, we allow the arms to fall naturally wherever they will, elongating the spine and lifting the chest through the arms hinging over top of the extended leg. Once again, noticing the sensations perhaps in the left lower back, perhaps the right hamstring is talking a little bit. Be gentle as we explore the depth of our stretches. Inhale, we'll press ourselves back up, stacking the vertebra. And then once again, tucking our right leg this time behind us, left leg. We want to bring the knee onto the mat. 
and lowering, lowering ourselves back so that we're working the right quadricep and hip flexor gently. Listening to the psoas, we hold a lot of emotion in our hips. We want to be gentle with ourselves and to not be surprised if when we release our physical tension, emotions may arise. Exploring the position. Checking in with our breath. Making sure that it's not labored. If we're pushing too hard, we just need to ease off a little. here for three more breaths. And then on the next inhale, we'll slowly press ourselves back up, possibly digging the elbows in and then the hands. And we come back to our seated position. Extend the legs this time, long on the mat. Straightening the legs out in front in staff pose. Giving them a little bit of a wiggle. Ah, wiggling around the ankles. And let's add a wrist wiggle in there as well. Bringing some awareness to our grounding joints. On the inhale, we're going to lift both of our hands off the mat, lifting them over our shoulders. We'll keep our feet flexed, possibly the knees are bent. On each exhale, we'll lower the arms to the side, looking back behind us. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and inhale, lifting the arms. Then on the exhale, rotating, hinging forward. With both hands, we gaze back towards the arms. On the inhale, we lift all the way back up, stacking the vertebrae. And on the exhale, we come to the opposite side, reaching back long on the mat to the rhythm of our breath. Inhale, lift. And exhale, forward fold, rotating gently, keeping this flow going to your speed and your ability. Any sensations in the back of the legs? Breathing the legs long on the exhalation. Adding in any visualization that may help you. Release tension in the back of the legs. Perhaps a waterfall flowing down from the lower back all the way through to the ankles. Following the gaze of our hands. Go ahead and do one more on each side. On the next inhale, we lift all the way back up, reaching to the sky. And the exhale, we hinge forward, reaching towards the feet, holding here, keeping the feet flexed. Allowing the chin to lower to the chest. No expectation or destination. Allowing the arms to fall where they will naturally. If that reaches your foot, fine. 
And again, there's no expectation. We all hold our tension differently. We all have different flexibility. We do what works best for our own bodies. And that may be different day to day. So we honor the state of our body in this moment, the here and now. Lifting our arms parallel to the floor. And we're gonna pulse gently forward and back, reaching towards the feet or beyond. Keeping the head hanging low, chin is to chest, pulsing, getting into those connected tissues in the back of the leg, breaking up any blocked energy. One more deep breath. And then when you're ready, go ahead and slowly stack the vertebrae one at a time. And once again, giving the ankles a little bit of a twist. Point and flex. Coming into fire log. So possibility is to stack the legs one on top of the other. Otherwise, come into an easy seated position. We're not here for long, but what we will do is a forward hinge. So once again, we want to walk the hands forward, keeping our sit bones firmly planted on the mat and we're hinging at the hips, not rounding out and collapsing. We don't want to compress anything. We want to elongate the upper body and then slowly walk the hands forward. Again, this may be as far as you can go. So we have blocks, we have blankets, we have all sorts of things that we can use to lift the ground up towards us. Slowly easing our way into each pose, listening to the sensations and letting them guide the depth of each pose. You may be feeling the, the, le the right hip or the left hip, depending on which one is on top. Breathe into it and work to release any stored tension that we might be holding. And as and when you're able to, perhaps you can lower down, stacking the fists, or even lowering down the hands, keeping the chest lifted and elongated over top of the top leg. Checking in with the breath. Noticing the softness of the muscles in the face. Maintaining a flat back, you are welcome to let the head hang heavy. Good. On the next inhale, we'll press ourselves up gently. And we'll switch the position of our legs and do it all over again. Noticing any differences in one side to the next. Starting by rooting the sit bones through the mat and then hinging forward, elongating the spine. Exploring the release of the tension in our muscles, easing our way down into the pose. And again, just noting any different sensations we may have on this side that we didn't have on the other. 
And remembering that all of our sensations are transitory. That nothing is permanent. Everything is in a state of flux at all times. Elongating the spine on the inhale. We sink lower as possible on the exhales. Option here to bring the hands behind the back, interlacing them, possibly even rolling the shoulders back, lifting the hands, allowing the head to hang heavy. Optional, of course. We do what fits our body today. Be here for one more breath. And then on the next inhale, we'll press ourselves all the way back up to an erect spine and extend our legs wide on the mat. Yay for that. Flexing our feet, pressing ourselves forward, and again bringing our, our blocks so that they're close by as needed. From here, we're going to do some arm raises side to side. So lifting the right arm and lowering over to the left slightly. On the inhale, we lift the left and exhale lower to the right. Just flowing left to right as suits you. Gently working through the side body. Possibly even feeling a little bit more in the thigh muscles be on the inside of the knees and the lower back, no doubt. Option to expand the circling of the arms, coming all the way around and in front. Opening up the chest and the shoulder with each inhalation. Big circles. Or, of course, there's an option just to hold. Again, we listen to our bodies, we do what our bodies need today. Perhaps you want to explore making the circles in one direction and then the other. Let's do two more circles or dynamic motions, and then we'll all meet up in a side bend. Whichever side comes next, opening up, and once again, coming over to the side, elongating the spine. And then on each exhalation, we'll slowly lower our torso, rounding it forward. Eventually, we're going to walk the hands back to the front. Once the hands touch, go ahead and walk them gently and slowly in front of the body. 
Extending the arms long, extending the legs long, the feet are flexed, and we hinge over, drawing the upper body, the chest is being drawn through the shoulders, adding a little extra tension into the thigh muscles, possibly feeling this running through from the groin into the knee, be gentle, once again, breathe the inner thighs long as if waterfalls were flowing all the way through. On the next inhale, we'll walk the hands up, stacking the vertebrae. And then we side bend into the other leg, finding the elongated spine, deep breath in. And then on each exhale, we slowly lower the upper arm to meet the bottom arm, noticing the sensations in our lower back as we roll through. And once the hands meet, go ahead and walk them forward. And once again, press into our wide angle, forward fold. Keeping the feet flexed, pointed to the ceiling. We don't want to be collapsing into our legs. If we need to prop ourselves up, then we do so. Keeping a tall upper body. Three more breaths. And on the inhale, go ahead and stack the vertebrae. Grabbing onto the knees, giving them a little wiggle and draw the legs all the way back in front of us, bringing the soles of the feet together uh, into a diamond pose reaching for our ankles or the shins. And let's go ahead and butterfly the legs gently. Rounding the shoulders back, drawing the shoulder blades into the spine. And now let's press the knees down to the mat. And we'll hinge forward slightly. Working our way into the hip joints while maintaining a tall upper body. Feeling dynamic tension throughout the whole body as we press the knees towards the mat. And go ahead and relax. Ah, rounding the shoulders forward. Inhale, let's draw the shoulder blades back. Exhale, round them forward, leading with the elbows, butterfly arms. Go ahead and do three more. Lifting the chest and rounding out. Great, coming back to neutral. Deep breath in and sigh it out. We're coming all the way down onto our backs now in supine pose, slowly lowering ourselves down one vertebra at a time. Shoulders and head. We are keeping our legs at 90 degrees, feet are firmly planted on the mat. And we'll come up into a hip bridge. So driving through the feet, firmly grounding them, all four corners of the feet into the mat. On the inhale, we draw the pelvis off the mat, lifting each vertebra up, and then driving the weight into our shoulders and neck. Exhale, we come all the way back down just as slowly 
allowing the hips to settle back on the mat. And then on the inhale, we drive back up, allowing the chin to roll towards the chest. Exhale, we lower down. Going to a slow speed here. Inhale, stacking the knees on top of the ankles. Dynamic tension in the glutes and the thumbs. And then we exhale, floating back down. Option here to engage the arms. Allowing the arms to float overhead as you exhale and lower down. On the inhale, we float the arms back to our sides. Possibly doing some box breathing here. We'll do three more. On the inhale, we bring our knees off the ground, giving them a hug, wrapping our arms around the shins, drawing our head and shoulders off the mat. And now lowering the shoulders and head back down to the mat, we have one hand on each knee or shin. We're gonna go ahead and just rotate and circle the legs in opposite directions. Moving through the hip joints, not worrying what we look like, focusing on the sensations of each hip joint, the fluidity of motion, and our breath. Are we moving to our breath and to our capability, not forcing anything? Switching directions of both legs. Maybe be a little wobbly at first, stay with it. One more time. And again, bringing the legs back together and go ahead and circle both knees together. Our hands are hugging the knees in, circling them gently within the hips sockets. Noticing what's happening in the hips as well as the lower back. And then switching directions. Finding stillness here, taking a deep breath in and sighing it out, stacking the legs over top of the hips, flexing the feet, adding additional lymphatic drainage, go ahead and point and flex or roll the feet however feels comfortable, just trying to keep our legs as straight as possible. Pressing the knees back away from us, adding extra flexion in the back of the legs. Right. Bringing the left ankle down across the right knee, we'll thread the needle, rocking, pulsing, whichever works. And 
then into our spinal twist, we'll go in the direction of the left knee, lowering to the left side of the body, possibly using the left foot on top of the right knee as extra weight to add intensity to the stretch. Possibly heel toeing the foot back in line with the hip. Trying to maintain a neutral spine here. Check the location of the right foot in comparison. And maybe even pressing the left leg on top of the right one a little bit more, pulsing or butterflying. Whatever feels most comfortable in your twist. Two more breaths here. We'll slowly center the legs, untwining them, and then crossing the right foot over the left knee, drawing the legs in, threading the needle, and rocking or pulsing. This time our spinal twist will go the opposite direction, so following the top knee, going over to that side, allowing the left foot to come down to the mat and the right leg to add extra weight to the left leg as possible. Heel toeing the left foot back in line with the left hip, maintaining some alignment of the spine gazing wherever feels most comfortable. Perhaps you just want to keep your face up towards the ceiling or you want to gaze over the opposite shoulder. That's up to you. Find whatever position works best. And enjoy this moment of having stopped the stillness and the quiet of our minds and bodies. Three more breaths here. And then we rotate the lower body back to center, untwining. Go ahead and give yourselves another big hug, throwing the knees into the chest, wiggling around. Final movements here before we come into Happy Baby and Shavasana to finish our practice. Good. Go ahead and grab onto the feet, however works best for you, possibly wrapping the hands around the front or through on the inside. Option to hang out here, drawing the knees towards the armpits, the shoulder blades are firmly planted on the mat, dynamic tension of the upper body. Option to extend one leg out or both. Exploring each possibility, the sensations in our body. Finding stillness, if that's what your body needs today. Or 
dynamic movement to work through any last tension that we may be hanging on to in our lower body. We'll be here for two more breaths. And then when you're ready, go ahead and draw the bottoms of the feet back together. Wrapping our hands around the outside of the feet, pressing the knees away and drawing the heels down towards the mat. Last time to engage all the muscles equally, pressing our abdomen down. The navel is drawn through the spine, pressing the lower back in, feeling the contact of our head, our shoulder blades, upper back and lower back, as well as the hips. Pressing those knees away. One more breath. And we'll release. And then slowly lower the legs all the way down on the mat long, reaching the legs long, allowing the lower back to assume its natural position. And finding ourselves in our final resting place to finish our practice. And as we again find stillness and quiet, we absorb and integrate the benefits of today's practice into our muscle memory, our mind, and our nervous system. We draw awareness to our bodies and our breath, restoring ourselves to a healthy baseline while training our minds for more challenging experiences in our daily lives. Drawing our awareness to the breath. And again, noticing the exhalation and the pause in the, at the bottom of each one. And reflecting on any intention we may have set at the beginning of practice. And with smiles on our faces, we give thanks for the opportunity to practice the support of this networking community. And perhaps we reflect on something special somebody did or said to us this week. Let's put a smile on our faces and our hearts and reminded us how loved and valuable we are. We take the gratitude with us in the days ahead. We let it shine through us. We share it with others in our other bubbles and communities. Thank you for joining. And I wish you a great continuation in a very zen afternoon or evening. 
And when you're ready to come back to the reality of our daily life, we roll up gently, pressing ourselves back up. Or we take our time and enjoy the stillness and the peace and zen that we've created. Thank you for joining. And we'll see you next time. Namaste.